Call Me Beautiful Lives of the World, it's me, Green Nightmare. And if you want the much, it's, I'm going to link it down below, but go check it out. There's three designs there, and I hope you do like it. There's actually an, a dreary one that is a, um, a limited edition for this year for Happy Halloween 2019. Please go check that out and get a hoodie. You can get sweat, sh well, same thing. A long sleeve shirt, a short sleeve shirt, a bag. I think you can even get a mug. Go check it out, please. And do whatever you would like, but go check it out, please, for me. And just at least look at it. You don't have to buy anything, but let me. I want some feedback on my designs and what I should do with them. Please let me know. Um, let's get into the reading, shall we? Okay. It's called A Wedding and Life After Hogwarts. Drarius POV. Harriet and I had just exchanged vows at her wedding. From when I proposed three years prior, I was giddy with excitement to marry her. I was apprehensive about dating her when we first went out because I didn't want our uh, want our relationship to ruin to be ruined. However, I was head over heels in love with her. We're finally married, she whispered to me. I'm s I'm so happy for you for that. I rubbed her nose against him. I rubbed my nose against hers. Are you? <sighs> I've been want waiting to marry you ever since we were twelve. Of course I'm happy. She gave me a bored look and I laughed, kissing her mouth. Well, we've done our wait. You're waiting. Now you're done. I was officially hers. I got home from work, which w was a potions position at Hogwarts. I got to leave after my classes ended each day because of my family. That's right, my family. Harry and I had a three, uh, a little three-year-old son named Re uh, Reginald and another little girl on the way. When I wa walked into the family room, he was taking a nap with little Reggie. She was taking a nap with little Reggie, and her hand was was on five month uh, on the five month belly. I grinned at the sight and decided that I should probably wake them. I walked over to them and gently shook her hat. I whispered. Hattie, wake up. I, w I told her gently, and she, s she slowly opened her eyes and grinned. Hi, lovely. How was work? She asked, sitting up. Reggie gave a cry of protest at being moved, but quickly settled when she, when she placed a kiss on his forehead. Work was great. I missed you, though. How's the little one doing? I asked her, and she placed my, my hand on her belly. Started kicking today, she informed. Hi, baby. Mama is home. Can you kick? Can you kick her? A kick for her, princess? She cooed, like she heard us. Our baby kicked very gently. Oh my goodness! I grabbed her belly and squatted down. I placed my lips on her belly and then grinned. I love you so much. I love you so much, Harriet. I told her and she pulled me into a kiss. Can you believe it all started in a robe shop? She asked and I laughed. Not in the slightest. I told her. Not in the slightest. Wow, that was a lot okay, we got this, okay, 
I don't know why this is playing. Go away. Give me an X. <laughs> a thing was gonna play for an ad. Popularity and gender fluid. Dreary. Draco's POV. I was walking with my friend Harry Potter, whom I... This is a no magic universe. I was walking with Pot my friend Harry Potter, whom I had been crushing on for some time. He was just really cute, with his gem green eyes and short stature and po uh, pouty pink lips. What are you doing this weekend? I asked him as we walked towards our lockers. Hmm, nothing really. Why do you ask? He asked me and I smiled. Uh, I was just wondering if you would you'd want to uh hang out? I asked him a slight blush crept across my cheeks as his cheeks and he scratched the back of his head um of his neck. Y yeah, sure. What would it, well that would be fine. He cleared his throat. <clears> throat> okay, awesome. I grinned, looking down at him, and he looked up at me. I want to show you something. Is that all right? He asked, and I i was slightly taken aback. Um, sure. I nodded my head, and we got to, my, got to our lockers, and he turned to me. I'll see you later, okay? Yeah. See you later. He smiled and then sauntered off. For our hangout plans, we decided to meet up, meet at the local park. When the time, uh, when the time we discussed to meet passed, I started to get worried. I looked around and all I saw was a girl around my age at the park. She started to walk towards me, so I looked away. It didn't. I didn't know her. Why would she be walking towards me? Draco? I heard, I heard, so I looked up. It was the girl who had been walking towards me, but by closer inspection, I realized who it was. Harry? I gasped. He was in pink floral type dress with slip on shoes. He had a white cardigan over his shoulder shoulders to keep um, keep warm from the slight chill. His face was covered in light makeup, and I only realized that that because his lips were slightly redder. He was wearing a wig that was pulled back into a braid. If you can call me Hattie, that'd be great, he told me, and I stared. I don't understand, I stuttered. I am, um, uh, I've been meaning to, you know, tell you, he admitted. I'm, I'm uh, gender fluid. Some days I'm a girl and others I'm a boy. It's just who I am, he explained. And today y you're a girl, I, bl um, I blurted and... He, or she, smiled. Yes, is that an issue? She asked. And I, just, I stared for a bit. No, I loved Harry. My friend... I loved Harry, my friend. Hattie was Harry, and I would love them all the same. No. Really? Really. H Hattie... I I actually wanted to hang out with you to ask you something, I started. Yeah, what? She asked. Will you go out with me? I asked, and her eyes widened. You'd still want to be my boyfriend, even like this? She asked, and I smiled. I leaned in and pressed my lips against hers. She kissed back and gently put her arms around my neck. We pulled away and we grinned at each other. I'll take you any way you, I can get you. 
to me you're perfect just the way you are i told i told her and she grinned thank you draco i pecked i pecked her lips once again anything for my darling she just smiled at, to that and linked her linked our hands yes this was perfect. Um, the there's a note from the author. I deeply apologize if I've misunderstood gender fluid. I'm not familiar with it. I mean, no respect to those who are. If I am incorrect, please feel free to correct me on it. Thank you. Let me look at the comments. Um... Um, nope, not, nothing against it. I, on the other hand, do not know anything about gender fluid. I am all accepting. I'm that person that says if you have a problem with something or you need to talk to someone, I am here for you. You have my social medias. You can talk to me at any time. I promise. Student and teacher. Very. Trigger warning. Read with caution. This is the non-magic universe. Harry's POV. Being a new teacher at a school was pretty intimidating. New people you have to work with. Students you have to get to like you. You have to, and you have to deal with the parents. What made it worse was I was only years older than the last years of, uh, at the school which made it hard for them to listen to me. I didn't do it. I didn't, I heard someone calling out. I stopped my my walking up and peered down another hallway. I I didn't, father. A boy called. He had platinum blonde hair, and he was sitting against the wall. He was scratching and biting at himself. Well, that's not good. I rushed over to him and saw it, and he saw me coming and cried out. Hey, shh, I hushed. Don't cry. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't do it. I, he whimpered, whimpered. I, it wasn't me. Shh, hey, shh, what's going on? I asked, and he looked up. He was shaking like a leaf, so I gently reached out and he instantly clung on to me and tried to and I tried to soothe him. As a teacher, I'm not exactly allowed to touch the students, but he needed to be comforted. Kid? Draco, he told me. Okay. Draco, what's wrong? I asked and he curled into into my chest. My my, my father hurts me. He told me, and I felt lightheaded, and I, I, I'm having too, too, too much anxiety for to function. He told me, and he showed me his arms, and they were li- littered with bite marks and scratches. Oh, you poor thing! I gasped, and I moved him so I could show him my arm. He looked at it a bit. Which re- uh, before reaching out and touching the scorn mark, what happened? W- what happened? He asked. I lived with my aunt and uncle. He hated me and abused me any chance he got. This is the worst he did. He took a hot iron from the pa- uh, f- fireplace and burned my arm. I told him, I was ten. Ten. He gasped, but after that I was taken away by child services. They brought me to a new home, the Weasleys. They weren't the richest, but they took me in as their own and saved me, I told him. I've, and I've, I'll save you too, he looked at me with hope. Do you promise? I promise. We got more time. Yay, yay, yay. 
Roommates and a Kept Promise Draco's POV For the last three years of my life, I had been living with my teacher, Mr. Potter. He had brought the abuse of my father to the attention of the headmaster. 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 He was the one who had had me removed immediately from my home and Mr. Potter, despite just meeting him, volunteered to take me in because I had nowhere to go. The headmaster explained to him that there, um, that would be an inappropriate due to the circumstances of him being our teacher. He resigned right then and there, leading me to break down again because I had never had someone to care so much about me and he just met me. Draco, where, do, where are you at? He called. In here, I called from the living room of his little condo. He had treated me like a real parent. That was until I fell for him. I had uh, woken up from the, a pretty brutal nightmare, and he was there. He comforted me and held me as calm as... Um, so I can calm down. I kissed him that night, and he told me it was wrong. I told him it was okay because he was not my teacher anymore and that I was an adult, that I could make my own decisions, and he agreed about after m- much debate. Ah, there you are. Did you have a good day? He kissed my forehead before sitting next to me. Eh, classes were Marocor. Marocor? Um. Whatever that word is, please look it up for me. I shrugged. I crawled. So I crawled so I can, could cuddle up to him. He pulled me. Uh, he pulled me so my head rested on his chest. How was work? I asked. Despite resigning from school, he got a new job in the next town over. Teenagers are annoying as hell, and they don't pay attention. But jokes on them, they got, they're going to have give them a pop quiz. Ooh, you're bad. I teased and snarling into his, che- into his chest. I looked up and he, he smiled down at me. I missed you, he admitted, and I leaned in, leaned up. I pressed my lips against his and kissed him slowly. I missed you too, I mumbled against his lips. His grip tightened around me and we, and he, we pulled around me and I pulled away. I love you, Mr. Potter, I told him, and he rolled his eyes, but rubbed his nose against mine. I love you too, I love you, Draco. I hugged him tightly after that. I was just happy that the teacher kept his promise to the, the scared student. This is me. That sounds like too much work. I just, I'm, I'm watching like a, um, you know those puzzles that you have to get in order by moving around blocks? I'm looking at that right now because they made an app for it. I'm like, <laughs> jokes on them. That's too much work. Oof. No. 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 Sorry about that. Anyways, let's go on. Harry. Okay. I'm sorry, something got in the way. Here, let me get on. Harry, okay. Rumors and vengeance. uh, Dreary. Harry went too far. Draco was very abdomen that he didn't cheat, but the head, hot headed head, went off and told the entire school he did. Now they hated him for it, hated him for hurting the golden boy. 
People would bully him in the hall, push him around, and beat him up. They called him scum, degrading all because Harry lied. This led to his depression and staying in bed all day, staring at nothing. Draco, come on. You have to come out soon. People aren't even talking about this about it anymore. Puss, put. <laughs> Pansy stopped speaking when she saw Harry wince at the name of his ex. His moved on has has moved on. She added softly, Draco didn't.